Um, uh, I'm Shana Zemmet and uh, I practice Lascani Pediatric Dentistry in uh, Baldwin. Uh, we're going to talk about Start Right, uh, how you as parents uh, make uh, the difference and uh, this is basically a very practical guide uh, to your baby's dental health. So, um, so uh, this, this lecture is arranged by the same chapter of Imana. Islamic uh, Medical Association of North America. I, I got this lecture uh, from the Missouri Dental Foundation, um, Missouri Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, and this is the lecture that we have um, basically to educate um, the population. So uh, without further ado, I want to uh, uh, talk about um, the importance of uh, baby teeth. Um, so, I, you know, I get this all the time in my clinic. Um, oh! Why do you want to fix this? It's just a baby tooth. It's going to fall out. But um, let's talk about the basic importances. Uh, so the primary of baby teeth um, helps a child to chew and speak. So the primary of baby teeth uh, helps a child to chew and speak. Uh, chewing, pretty much everybody knows teeth are used for chewing. But the speaking part is uh, very important because if you don't have your front teeth, a lot of the sounds you make where your tongue touches your teeth, you cannot make. And sometimes you have uh, lisps like sss because your, your tongue is not touching your tooth. So it becomes very important and then children get teased at school uh, from that. Okay, go ahead. Um, the primary teeth, the baby teeth, hold the space for the adult teeth and help to guide them during eruption. So now if you don't have those baby teeth, uh, your big people teeth or your adult teeth will not know where to go. So all of a sudden, they're lost in your mouth and they don't know where to come. So with the baby teeth in your mouth, it's very important because now you're, uh, as the big, big person tooth is developing in there, it'll follow that baby tooth into position uh, and that becomes very important. And now, um, if you lose a tooth early, it becomes an issue for braces also. Now. Um, what happens is some children, unfortunately, they get an infection, things like that. You lose a tooth, and then, for one thing, the tooth behind it starts moving forward. The tooth there that is supposed to come in uh, is going to get delayed, and so you get into issues with braces with that. Um, okay, go ahead. And uh, the next thing is they, uh, the baby teeth, they aid in, in jaw and face formation and influence the child's overall health. Uh, so, you know, having your teeth there, uh, if you don't have teeth, you don't have bone. And if you don't have bone, your face will collapse around you and it will not look nice. You know, sometimes children fall, God forbid, and then they lose a tooth. If they lose it too early uh, due to trauma and things, the, prime, the, uh, the permanent tooth, it'll take a long time to come in. So normally, say, for a front tooth, it'll come in at the age of six or seven, it'll get delayed by another two years. So you're looking at eight or nine, and you've got this kid going to school, and everyone's teasing them. Oh, where's your front tooth? Well, you know, that's just the nature of the beast. So now let's talk about uh, teething. Go ahead. Just basic instruction. Uh, you know, the baby teeth usually start coming about the six, six months of age. That's about average. Uh, go ahead. Um, the front four teeth, they're up first, followed by the first molars, and then the cuspids. Fancy words for saying. Front four is obviously the four, four teeth you can see. Uh, the first molars are further back, and then the cuspids are the canines, or the eye teeth, as some people call them. And that's pretty much the average uh, sequence of eruption. Huh? Um, and then the second molars are the last to erupt. Uh, they're called the two-year molars, so it's usually two, two and a half, three, but um, that's about the age of uh, the second molars. And so, uh, go ahead, and they get a total number of 20 teeth. Uh, so that's the total count on a baby tooth. So if you have a baby who has 19 teeth, I wouldn't worry too much because, you know, go to the dentist and we can see maybe sometimes they're congenitally missing, which is not a big deal. Uh, we can always ev evaluate this. And uh, the other thing I get a lot of questions about is delayed eruption. And this also becomes an issue with braces as to when to start braces because uh, now if a child gets a first um, incisor where they're supposed to get at six months, if they get it, let's say, about the age of one and a half years, well, all their teeth are going to be delayed. And so when the average child starts braces, maybe, say, 12 years old, 
uh, your child, if they're delayed, may start around the age of 14. So it's something to keep in mind and let your dentist know that, oh, you know, my child's baby tooth came in at this time, so then the dentist will know about how to plan for treatment also, to know how long this baby tooth is expected to be in the mouth, uh, so we can uh, work with that. Okay, so this is just for babies. Uh, when they're teething, you know, they get irritable. Uh, so, you know, household remedies. A uh, cool washcloth, a spoon, a teething ring. Go ahead. Um, and uh, the gums can be massaged with the washcloth and your fingers. And um, go ahead. And then children's style, not like ibuprofen an hour before bedtime. Um, you know, the, the second part here, the gums can be massaged with the washcloth and your fingers. Uh, that is pretty much, you know, not just a teething issue. I would say when you have a baby, make that a habit to take care of their gums also, right from newborn. Take a, uh, a warm washcloth and just wipe their gums twice a day. Almost like it's not a toothbrush, but you're taking care of their gums and uh, controlling the, the bugs in their mouth, essentially. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. Okay. The numbing medication, basically, you know, you have a lot of numbing medication. You have baby Orogel, you have adult Orogel, but it's basically what it does is it's temporary relief. It numbs that area, and but the problem is, when you numb an area, a child can't feel it. So babies tend to injure themselves. When you can't numb it, they start pressing on it, and all of a sudden, you've got this red spot because the baby hasn't felt what they're doing, and you can cause an injury from uh, a numbing medication. And also, some babies just don't like it. Okay.